Hello there and welcome to Complete Games and a bit of a channel update slash talking heads video as we're going to be going over all of the island complete crew stuff and I didn't think it would be fair if we jumped away from the island map before I went over and showed you a little bit of the hard work that everybody put in on the discord and complete retreat community server and of course while this stuff is all organized through my discord my admin vexing cat and jaybird and a lot of others to be quite honest with you all contribute to this place and it's a place for arc survival evolved and dinosaurs we have the ragnarok server and of course we've been doing this complete crew stuff Recently, Vexing Cat has also added a Valheim server since the Half and Home update. And you can catch us playing anything there, really, from golf with your friends to Ark Survival. And we've even been doing some Phasmophobia stuff on the side as well. So I've got some stuff I've been working on for Halloween, and I'm looking forward to showing you off some of that content. So for something a little bit different, me and Vexing Cat caught up earlier this week to discuss all of the work that everybody put in for this one. And of course, answering questions that have pumped up into the comments as well. This over here was where we first spawned in and started building on top of the Weathertop build. And I don't know, how many was, there, there was probably about 20 of us, do you reckon, when we first got over? I don't know. Yeah, pretty, pretty close to 20. It served its purpose, this area, but it was just a bit cramped for all of us lot. So we ended up shifting over to the main building over here, which was built by Diva. She did a really good job. Like, I mean, I really enjoyed living here. I like the bedrooms all being separate. It's a really good build. So we drop stuff off just here outside when we had these, these doors open. Just to make it a little easier and a little drop off spot for people. We ended up moving the tech fabricator up here and that. And this is actually, I prefer this way of storing stuff with the signs like this. I don't know, do you? Yeah, actually I do. Because we got one of the mods we used, the role play storage, this stuff here. So, I mean, it's handy for dropping off and building the saddles. This is how I like to stack up stuff in the vaults. That! I love, I absolutely love. He's gonna like it clean and simple. Mmm, less is more, innit? Mm-hmm. Next we've got, well, we've got Chonk's parking lot up here. What do you think of Chonk's parking lot, Bex? We got a lot of use out of it. It's well built. Um, it has room for parking vessels up top. Yeah. Argy's on the other levels and Trenodons. It's just another one of them things that gave it a little bit of character. Chonk's built quite a few things actually around the tribe, hasn't he? <laughs> I only saw this at the end, by the way. I didn't see this before. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, I, I only noticed this right at the end. I kind of missed out on the bathroom. Sanitary facilities. So we got ladies on the left and gentlemen on the right? Yeah, yeah, coming to the gents. I suppose yours is probably better looking. In the gents side God, please, no! i like the fact that it actually has running water um, in the shower i thought that was pretty cool actually that they, they, they wired that in to have actual shower showers it did make me laugh a little bit the toilets on this side it's all those little details yeah this was uh this is shaz's vivarium or something it did have a load of beehives in it but they've all died now yeah, it was kind of a um, apiary slash uh, greenhouse. But there was loads of beehives in it. I actually like what she's done with these, the, the ceiling up here. Yeah, it's a style I also like to build with, um, with the glass. How it sort of, mine just tends to be a circle, but I like how all this meets in a point. It's a really cool, yeah, it's definitely a very cool build. I like it. So at the moment on the server, we've got Ragnarok that's open up to everybody, but pretty much everybody who played with us on the island, we're just, they're just players that we've been playing with on the servers that we've been doing, well, as long as we've been doing them, but you're pretty much the main person who does all the admin on my servers. The greenhouse, everything's died in here now, I think. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. Service purposes, I did not know could stick bunny ears on top of the snail. Snail. Yeah. I know, isn't isn't that delightful? 
What did you think of the area setting up here for a big alpha tribe then on the weather top? I think it's worked out well. I've always built kind of close to here, but never actually utilized this space. No, for a long time I've always looked at the island and thought this area would suit an alpha tribe and uh, I definitely remember the time we, we set up in here. It was a new one for me. So one of my favorite areas was over this way. It's just a really cool little area. It's a shame it's raining right now because it's actually a really nice viewpoint as well. Um, mm -hmm. It serves no purpose apart from looking cool, but I mean, I reckon, I think everybody must have sat here at some point in the tribe, you know, just to chill out for a bit. I kind of thought that maybe we'd use it as a little meeting area. Mm. Yeah, to discuss yeah, um, people that are getting banned and kicked and stuff like that off the server and that, yeah. The whole base is loaded in from here, isn't it? You know, behind you. Yep. Um, that's one thing that does my head in when we go on the servers. I know people build so big that stuff just doesn't get a chance to load in. And in spite of us being an alpha tribe, there isn't much of that going on. Have you, you know, with what we've got going on? One of the reasons we wanted to build down here by the water is we knew we would... Um, be needing to do the water caves so we probably need to um keep uh bassies and um breed them yeah we did end up utilizing this area for breeding and what were our bassies like i can't remember did we actually mutate did we get any mutations? no they were just imprinted weren't they yeah. yeah they didn't really need it um they were sufficient to to get things done but this was uh, the first breeding uh, building that we built down here, um, yeah. an area. Stone Cold was one of the members who did some of this, and Jay just inside here, wasn't it? So yeah, we got down here, a little uh, this for our frogs and anglerfish for getting the silica pearls with and stuff. I like it, it's a nice open area building. Mm -hmm. So I basically, I took Romeo and Jay who, anyway, there, there are two breeders on the island. And we recorded something, but it didn't come out. So you're coming back to help me out. And I just want to go over and show everything. So firstly, over the back here, we've got what we bred. These were all examples of what we had. Starting with the T-Rexes, what were we looking at? Did you say six mutations, seven mutations in on health? It looks like seven. So I personally had on my Rex, I reckon around 50,000 health, probably about 500 melee damage. But everybody else, it would seem, averaged out around 30,000 health and rest in melee damage. They were more than enough for the Mevacopithecus and the Broodmother. We wasn't specifically breeding these to go to fight the dragon with. And when I did, on the island run I did, I bred a whole different bunch of rexes up to fight the the dragon with and stacked yeah more a lot more mutations into melee in fact i think i had probably over a thousand damage on melee for, for them rexes but we went a few different ways didn't we stone cold was in charge of the ute breeding how many did we get because these are actually really good these UEs. Um, yeah i didn't think we were going to get um UDs this good uh he pretty much rescued uh the UDs that we were able to bring him and made something out of him. I'm really impressed. I didn't think we were going to get this. They but, were brilliant. Um, they were really good in the strong cave as well. They absolutely trumped that. Uh, 44,000 health, just over 400, 40 melee damage. And yeah, same 15 on each side. Um, so you really did go overboard on these UEs, but Stone wanted the project and he, he, he really went for it on these. He really had to work hard. We um, were not able to find any really decent UDs on this map. Mm. And we just finally had to settle for what we had. Which um, also brings us to, because me and you personally, we must have spent five or six nights at least trying to find aloes. And just over here is what we ended up with best aloe stat wise, these, this bunch over here. Mm -hmm. um and rimrin she well she got some of these but i mean they were really pretty poor stats weren't they we just couldn't find anything good allosaurus wise so mm -hmm. that was a bit of a shame because i like them i was definitely wanting to take them in the tech cave but we went fairies we had a really good bunch of fairies you know these guys absolutely annihilated the dragon didn't they 
Um, yes, I did. We did get um, an Ascendant through a Xeno Saddle. Um, a pretty good one, even with only the 14% crafting bonus that this particularly particular theory's got. The saddles were good. The little bit of food that we put on there, what, about 10 cakes on each? And I don't know if we took that boss on tactically really well because everybody knew what we was doing but it really wasn't a problem and the dragon has always been a problem for me but these i think what we in in all of the times we did it we lost like one theory didn't we or it might have been your ut or something we one theory maybe i don't we didn't lose a saddle and nothing nobody we didn't lose a person in any of them battles so we really no. did smash the the dragon on the island with these theories and again i think most of them had close to yeah a thousand melee damage health wise around the twenty thousand mark health wise i mean doesn't really make much of a difference when it comes to fighting the dragon does it yeah it's more of a um, a melee thing that you want on them than the health yeah glass cannons basically but um, yeah, as ugly as these things look, the turquoise and pink. <laughs> oh no, they're not ugly. <laughs> Come on. And then there was the megatheriums that we had. Finally, um, we had the ramshackle saddle was the best that we managed to get. Uh, we put them up against the brood mother. Um, we lost five or six, but yeah, they they definitely beat the alpha brood mother. I mean. <laughs> We could have easily stacked more mutations with the Mega Theorems. These were just a late comer and we, we just didn't get a good enough saddle blueprint for them. But yeah, there was that bonus episode we did. But yeah, we was the intention was to fight each of the island's bosses with a different type of creature. And I guess we did that really because in the end, we did beat the Alpha Brood Mother with Mega Theorems. Well, it's it's like you've said a number of times uh, through this uh, playthrough to us all. It's 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 random on what we're gonna get. Yeah, both in terms of the saddle. A lot of people say, "Oh, what's the best option to fight this or that?" But every time you play a game of Ark, it's random. It you could end up with the ultimate Allosaurus that can stomp on all three of the bosses if you breed them right probably and get you through the whole game without it but i don't know that's if you got that right saddle and you got that right you know the, the right stats on the dino isn't it each time is different yeah i really wish this had been um an aloe playthrough mm. um i really wanted it very badly to be an aloe playthrough it just didn't turn out that way well because technically that's our last chance if we're sticking to core maps, there's no Allosauruses on Scorched, there's none on Aberration, and if there are, I think there are on Extinction, but there's not much point at that point, is there? Mm -hmm. There's diff way different options by the time we get there, so, of course, for Ragnarok and on our normal server, we'll, you know, I'm always looking for that Allo pack, because I think they're great, but, um, yeah, in terms of completing it with the crew, that was our only shot at being able to do it with our sources so yes and then no, we're not even thinking about the herbivores i mean since the stego got its update the stego is a, a an option to take on island bosses isn't it as well if you can get a good stego saddle so mm -hmm. so i'm just going to go and set off with set off these theories because they won't take too long to drop their eggs and we can just go over this building area because it's so well organized and put together so on top of this building here, we've got the two males. Below each ma male, is, is it 15 females, I think, underneath each one? So we just need to turn the top two on. I'll come down, they should all be mating now. It's very efficient. I had never seen this done until um, Jay and Romeo did this. I was so, really, really, really impressed at how well this works. And so how Jay did this was, there was a ceiling above three three levels up they were all stood on the ceiling once he took the ceiling away they all stay in their place like this and as we can come down here just underneath i've now i've done this before i did this in scorched and i've been doing it for quite a while um i like having a load of these underneath the floor out of the way 
so that the eggs can drop on. It works really well. I also like uh, having the, this sort of basement for doing the wiring and plumbing. Yeah, and gets rid of all the wiring, the plumbing. <laughs> so I just jumped up and smashed it. Ah, oh, there. So basically, yeah, the eggs come to the floor. They start incubating. Um, I believe we got 14 mutations in. Now, this was so well done that basically any member of the crew could come down here and just take over from the breeders. So we got the ferries on the go at the moment. Just over here, the mega theorems again how they were lined up just down here really easy just to come and collect them wasn't it mm -hmm. and the rex is just well same principle it's just jay has a way of lining them up oh here we go they're all popping out so i mean look at that we can i can already see back here with the color mutations um I mean, numbers wise, what were we looking for? Really? We're oh, looking geez. for a, a 270, basically. If you see any 270s among this lot, then. I am looking. Oh, there's one. A 270. Oxygen mutation, which is no good, but hey, you know, that's how quickly. Oh, you're lucky. You're lucky, oxygen. Well, this is the last area that Chunk has built, his little memorial to everybody who made it and those that didn't make it. I need to fix the hat on this one. I need to put the green hat on. Mm -hmm. Who's Let put me, me in cut. underpants? Someone's taken my pants off. That's, I bet that's, I bet that's um, Romeo. He's been messing about. Could be. Or shiny. Shiny. I'm going to stick them on Romeo. There we go. There's Romeo. I know it was him. Flexing cat. Mother of all. Your mother of all. <laughs> like the name. I would have been better off with Den Mother. Or Cat Herder. Blue, blue. blue. How come Blue's in here with us? Like he's with the Ascended. He should be out there with the non-Ascended. I mean, I know he's part of the crew and stuff, but you know, you know, it was Romeo who was messing around with my pants, right? <laughs> Undoubtedly. Uh, Boss Chunk, but, but, builder and chef. He was builder and chef. He did a lot of the building materials. Um, what I really liked about this, intentional or not, is the fact that the roof is the shape of the implant. And it's kind of added the overseer that taxidermy over the top there, so we got this cool effect up. But yeah, did you notice that that, that it looked like an implant? Yeah, I did. Just a cool little area. I don't know why me and you get to stand up there so tall, but hey, we do. I suppose we're the ones who have to put up with all of their whinging and that, aren't we? Well, you are, really. I don't put up with any of it. I just leave you to do it all. And then I just take credit. <laughs> but it's been good fun. I'm looking forward to doing um, Scorched Earth. I just wanted to take some time out to just go and have a look around the builds. I mean, what was your favourite thing, do you think? What's your favourite building out of all of the buildings? I did mine. I think mine was that little cabin chunk did outside. The small thing, but I'm probably going to use that. I actually just kind of like the little simple first building that Diva did. Oh yeah, yeah. Our first, our first little building. It just wasn't big enough. I know it's not fancy or anything, but um, it's just a nice little, little place. I like it from this angle with the leaf victus over the top of it as the jumping whale in that position, the little window in the top. It works really well. It works really well. Again, the use of stairs to give it that extra triangle because it's just going through a dinosaur gate. Um, Kind of that Viking Roman Rohan Lord of the Rings type of horseman you know, build. Very cool. 
So that concludes our look behind the scenes and all of the builds and some of the work that went into making the Complete Crew episodes. A big thanks to Vexing Cat for going over all of that stuff. And of course, if you're on PC and want to join in the Discord shenanigans, then links are in the descriptions of any of my videos. We do have the Ragnarok community server on PC at the moment for everybody. But like I say, you'll often find us streaming all sorts of stuff there. A big thank you to all of the patrons scrolling up the screen right now. As always, you're a huge help. And I hope to bring you all a busy month of content during October, including some collaborations and some special stuff I've got planned for Halloween. I also intend to do some live streams throughout the month of October, so catch me over on Twitch. But do let me know in the comments if you think I should bring a live stream once a week to YouTube. I'm kind of undecided where's the best platform to do a bit of live streaming from and I figure quite often I'm just playing some random indie games that I get sent or something to look at and it's kind of cool to hang out with some of you guys while I'm streaming but let me know if you prefer to see me do that sort of stuff on YouTube as well or if I should just keep it separate on Twitch. I will of course be making more progress on aberration amongst other things during the month of October but until next time I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see ya.